Connecticut and Gamble Pavilion, one meets two in the Big East. UConn faces Marquette. They have sewn up the first and second seeds. UConn did so Thursday with its triumph over Creighton. Marquette, last time out, bested DePaul on Wednesday to sew up the two seed. And a very pleasant good evening. John Sadak alongside the former Maris shooting sensation all the way to the Sweet 16 and Julianne Vianne. Well, Jules, uh, some things change, some stay the same. For this UConn team, here they are, first year back in the Big East, number one in the country, and trying to put a bow on an unblemished run in regular season play. And they're trying to do that with no seniors. There were eight underclassmen on this team, and that has not been the case since the 2006-2007 season. So the fact that they could go undefeated in their first First year back in the Big East is pretty impressive to me. They've gotten a lot of contribution from their freshmen this year. Let's take a look at how the season has gone for Gino Oriema and company. 20 and one, number one for a third straight week. They shoot, they share the ball brilliantly. They're fresh off a five and zero journey on the road. Their longest road trip since 1980. All of those games back then were in New England. And Paige Beckers, she stirs the drink, and she was dynamite when these teams met on the 5th of February. And she was incredible. I mean, she has led this team in just about every category and has been every bit as advertised. She's got an unbelievable feel for the game where she makes the right decisions. She's unselfish, sometimes to a fault at times, and has the ability to play make it. Her calm demeanor, her ability to come off screens and knock down shots from the perimeter, there's not anything that she cannot do, and she's got an unrelenting competitiveness that really is reminiscent of Diana Tarasa to me. Certainly has that kind of feel for Marquette, the feel of a team coming into its own. They have a program record, 11 road wins. They have won 11 of their last 13. Their biggest win, their most recent game. Their first against a ranked squad, they took down DePaul in a rematch. And now it's time to tangle in a rematch with UConn. And they do so with their star leading the way, it's Selena Locke. And she's coming off a huge game, John, against DePaul. She dropped 25 points. The majority of those points coming in the second half, nothing phases her. And she She's been an anchor all season. She's done it on both ends of the floor, and they will need a big game out of her tonight. Well, Marquette has a litmus test. How far have they come? How much have they grown? They fell by nearly 30 in the first matchup, while the Huskies try to make it picture perfect on the return to the Big East. Few in America know what it's like to try to battle UConn in a rivalry like Megan Duffy. She won a couple of games in her playing days at Notre Dame, including one here in stores. The 2020 Big East Coach of the Year, she is 27-8 and eight in Big East games. She has also started the same five in every game. Marquette is the only team in the Big East to have the same starting five all season. For UConn, look out for Aaliyah Edwards. 24 points, 9 of 10 from the field last time out at Butler. The veteran head man of UConn, Gino Oriema. Fresh off his 27th regular season conference crown, his 20th in the Big East. They clinch that by taking down Creighton on Thursday. They also played just a couple of days ago. And the Huskies controlled in front of a smattering of fans, very select friends and family socially distanced, including us. We're raised above the floor on the main concourse. Olivia Nelson Adota contested. Shot off iron, no, and the rebound right to UConn. Anika Mule, who's come on of late for the Huskies. A rebound is going to be a real big deal, I think, here tonight. Actually, Marquette has rebounded the ball pretty well out of any team in the Big East. I think they might be able to compete on the glass. That's something that we've got to keep the eye on. And Marquette has only been out rebounded three times in Megan Duffy's 53 games as head coach. Now, here's Selena Lott who had a tough time when they met in early February. Baseline J off for Van Clunen, put back rejected. Murata has it turned aside. Taylor gets hit, and a foul on Olivia Nelson Adota. Any potential second and third chance opportunities that Marquette can get tonight is just huge, and that's why rebounding is key. This is the garbage points right here, the hustle plays, and Cameron Taylor doing a terrific job going after that loose, that loose ball. She's coming off a nice performance against DePaul on Wednesday. This is a team flying high right now after beating DePaul. Megan Duffy star Cameron Taylor talked about rebounding. She said as a post group, we challenge ourselves every single day to rebound. We practice and shoot around no matter what it is. Rebounding is our strength and our go-to. 
Paige Beckers is the strength of UConn, finding Kristen Williams weaving. Medina Westbrook hang and miss in and out. And the board with the chin and spin of Van Plunen. Marquette pushing a little tempo here. High low and Murata disrupted. Active hands from Medina Westbrook, the Tennessee transfer. Now Westbrook is the only player on this year's UConn team, Julianne, who's over 21 years old. Their youth strikes you. It really does. I mean, that's impressive to me. And it's also impressive to Coach Oriema. I mean, he told us he did not expect so much that the freshman would turn on that that jet really so early. He knew eventually they would, but from the start of this season, they've been solid. And she's not a freshman. She is one of their older players, but the rest are young. Is Marquette trying to force things here in some of these high-low looks? Yeah, I think Marquette is one of those teams that is, that's their game. They want to get it inside, and they're one of those teams that still has traditional post-play. Murata, that was altered some on help there from Beckers. It's one of the growing points Megan Duffy talked about. All the trail three for Beckers off, weak side board to lock. She thought her Marquette team got pushed around some. Now they're pushing tempo. Van Cloonan weaving and puts it home. And typically Marquette's the team that will push you around. That is one thing that is their MO. They're tough, they're physical. So yes, UConn out toughed them in the first meeting. Even the free throw line. Look, Nelson Adota. Mule right back to her. She wants it in isolation. Dragging her in the lane. Short shot, bucket. What a pretty shot. And a tough shot, too. She's just so smooth. The top five recruit and a McDonald's All-American, as many are, that find their way to UConn. And a lot is the stud does a little bit of everything for Marquette. And they switch on the screen here. Murata, 10 to shoot. Jordan King tries to thread the needle. Double team, kick to lot. Back up top. King lets it fly. Out of bounds and air ball. It doesn't take long for the Huskies to, to get it going. And, of course, Nelson Udoda with a really beautiful spin move. I mean, it is difficult to stop that. You've got your hand in her face, and you just have to tip your cap to that. She's just smooth. Now, that's exactly what Gino Oriema told us he expects in this game. He thought they'd go a little bigger and involve the post more, especially early. Williams, free throw line, Jay on the way off. Back top by Nelson Udoda, they maintain. Beckers between the rings has had that one trail three try. Otherwise, hasn't been a big part of the offense just yet. Now lurking in the corner, Williams with the left hand pound. Slams on the brakes. Up top, hesitation. Westbrook. Beckers wide open with one on the timer. That was actually really nice help defense, but you can't help off Beckers. Oh, nice look by Lott. She beat Williams to the other end. Marquette's pushing it a bit here. But I don't know if you want to get in a tempo race with UConn. Beckers contested with contact off. Here come the Golden Eagles. The program record, 11 road wins. If you have it, I say push it because you're going to get easy shots like that in transition. I, I like that. Well, that's what Megan Duffy told us, right? You can see how animated she is coaching out there on the floor. And she confessed that she did connect with Muffet McGraw, her old mentor at Notre Dame, before the first matchup. And she said Muffet's biggest words of wisdom you got to score to beat to. UConn. <laughs> that's right. The only teams that can beat them is, are the teams that can offensively hang with them. And that's why Notre Dame throughout the years has been able to do that. And especially when the Skylar Diggins group came in. And that's something Megan Duffy even talked about as well. But if you can score with them, you can beat them. It's just a little more difficult when you watch them on film, you watch them practice, and then you play them. <laughs> that's always harder for the younger players. I came away from our conversation with Megan Duffy. Very impressed. Me too. Becker's elbow, Jay. The twine barely budges, Julianne. It doesn't matter where Paige Becker's is on the floor. She is going to produce. And she's really kind of like one of those quiet players, too. She doesn't come across like she's forcing things. She lets the game come to her. Nice on-ball screen here. And Olivia Nelson Dota has done this all season long. And Paige Becker's does a great job just keeping it tight off that screen. 9-6 margin, UConn in front. The last foul to Nika Mule of UConn. So no fouls on Marquette, two on the Huskies. As we have five and a half to go in this first quarter. Taylor 
Oh, nice look. The cut on the end line. Offensive foul. Beckers takes it underneath. Great defensive play because that was definitely a layup waiting to happen. Great job by Taylor penetrating and pitching. But she's got to stop a little bit earlier than that. And Beckers knew she was in front of that restricted line and does a great job, a nice heady play. Is Marquette showing anything defensively of note to you? No, this is actually man-to-man. -man. -man. I thought at first it was a zone. Lot on that playground save attempt, and Beckers, her court awareness in transition to alter that with her back three quarters away. Very mature. That's one thing that Gino Ariema kept telling us when we talked to him. She's more mature, mature than what you would ever expect from a freshman. And mature, I mean mature game. I mean, she just plays like a senior. Right down the heart of the lane, the runner off for King. After they doubled in the post, Beckers surveys has such feel. Mule steps into the three ball, a little short. Nelson Adot, to high post rebound. And they can reset. Westbrook. With Williams running back door. Westbrook. Oh, nice feed. And Nelson Adota has been the center of the offense. Oh, what a slip by her. I mean, she didn't even set the screen. She could just fake it and then slip to the basket. Just a very smart decision. She's got six to match Marquette. Second chance points are seven to UConn. And as Nelson Adota flashes out to help on lock. Off the fake to Ravalade, altered, disrupted, and the prayer put back off target. Mule's got it. Nika Mule. Oh, threads the needle to Beckers. Beckers. And watch out, if UConn gets a chance to run in transition, that is where the danger zone takes place. A 13-6 lead for the Huskies, and you can feel that shot to the face of Marquette. Lock off the fake kick. Murata, the long two is true. And she's a bit of a utility Swiss Army knife, a, a hybrid guard forward with a varied skill set. And that's what you want, right? Those are the kinds of highly sought after players, the versatile players that can play multiple positions. And Williams has gone a while without a touch. Beckers, Nelson Adota. She's wanted that muscle inside. This time rolls off the lip of the rim. It's going to be UConn the ball. And UConn up big early here. And such unselfish play, and Paige Beckers, of course, with that backdoor finish. Beautiful. Tonight, 12.30 Eastern, join Michael Breed as he tees off on the top headlines in the world of golf and delivers tips and tricks to better your game. Watch Course Record with Michael Breed on CBS Sports Network. Well, Paige Beckers is fresh off an assist record, but it's seven points in seven minutes tonight. She does it in such a variety of ways, and she makes it look so easy. She does it offensively. She'll do it on the defensive end, whether that's just getting her hand on pieces of the basketball. But what's so impressive about her and what Coach Ariama stressed that he said was that she just, there are very few plays where she's ahead of herself. And you can see how she slows the game down. She never trips over herself, just so smooth. Aaliyah Edwards has checked in for UConn. She gets fed in the post. And Edwards dragging her defender across the lane and bucket right over top of Laura Van Clunen. The point paints have tipped to UConn early. Aaliyah Edwards is a player that I've been looking forward to seeing. I mean, I've been watching her throughout the season, but she just keeps getting better. And UConn, eight of its 15 in the paint early. Kick corner, King three. Rattles on down. Nice ball reversal. And that's the way to get a good shot from three. Keep reversing the basketball. And Jordan King entered only a 25% outside shooter. Draws Marquette within four. This would be senior day, but UConn has no seniors, at least not players. Managers and support personnel were on it. That means everyone's coming back. Williams down the lane. Bucket and one. The first free throw attempt of the game for the Huskies. Williams has been really great as of late. This is a really nice job getting into the teeth of the defense. She is so powerful. She has such great body control when she gets to the rim, changes speed here and finishes. But now is the time for her to start getting hot. And the last few games, she just looks really, really good. And this is the time of season. Free throw is good. 
And the foul to Taylor Valade is her first. And UConn, four of its last five from the field, and that puts the pressure on Marquette to score. If you want a chance to beat UConn, you've got to put the ball in the basket. It sounds obvious, but it's ratcheted up with how they spread the floor and share the ball and score with reckless abandon. Wide open for three, in and out. It comes down to execution. They got some of those shots against UConn the first time. Will they make them this time is really what Coach Oriama said. He didn't think they'd miss as many this time as they did in the first. That looked like a fade in football there, trying to find Aaliyah Edwards, and she just about got tackled en route to the cup. She was really going after that basketball hard. It's a little too high. Let's see what Marquette can run at the half court against the length of UConn that can stun teams at times, let alone the off factor. Lot wide open. Great screen to free her up. Off the heel, no. Tip controlled by Edwards. Coming off a monster game, please. Force pass down the grain to the lane, stolen away by Valadeau. Edwards last time out, 24 points, 14 boards in just 26 minutes. Gino Oriema said, if you're saying every night we're in a game like that from Aaliyah, we're going to be very, very, very good. One shot off for Taylor. Now the Huskies five on four, Murata's trailing second. And raise left hand from head coach Megan Duffy to call the play. Ball screen, feed the screen, or hard cut. Edwards, blocking foul. And just a little bit late on the rotation, but you see that two-man game action on the right side UConn likes this pick and roll Paige Beckers is excellent off the pick and roll situation because she's a great decision maker of course Aaliyah Edwards who we've been talking about is just a terrific player and you're right you made that you said what Gino told us was that they will be hard to beat with her and coach Oriama talking to Paige Beckers he's still going to coach her the freshman who's been so coachable all season Edwards cans the first foul to Murata, her first. Liza Carlin has taken her spot. An animated Gino Oriema, who wants to see his team ready for tournament play. And that's not just even the Big East tournament on tap in Connecticut this weekend. These are the one and two seeds, UConn and Marquette, respectively. But for the NCAA tournament. And this season, UConn hasn't been tested quite as much as they have in non-conference playing the past due to the COVID stuff and teams not being available to play like the Baylor game. Tip out of bounds. Uh, Nelson Adota back in, and there is what happened to UConn in recent NCAA tournaments. Final four losses, heartbreakers. Morgan Williams sticking the shot for Mississippi State. Snapped the 111-game win streak. Arike Gumbawali with the crazy contested, not once but twice in regulation and overtime. Three-point shots. They have been very close, but haven't won a title since 2016. Beckers, after a little bit of coaching, sticks a tough shot. I bet he told her to shoot the ball. Guess right. what? He's been doing that all season long. She doesn't shoot enough for his liking. That's exactly what Megan Duffy expanded upon. She said in the first meeting, she thought they sloughed off, anticipating her to pass too often. And he said, hey, Gino's told her all year, shoot, shoot, shoot. Oh, nice high-low, but right there, the length of Nelson Adota to alter the shot. Seven unanswered for UConn. The Huskies enjoying a game-high 11-point lead. And now the final seconds. What do you want to see here? I want to see a play action here. and You, you know it's going to be a pick-and-roll situation. Beckers, two seconds, twisting elbow jumper, hits iron. For the first quarter complete, UConn had eight second chance points the first quarter in the first matchup nine tonight you're watching the march to march presented by principal financial group through a quarter uconn doubling up marquette 22 to 11. the next greatest generation is now presented by army National Guard, and we shine the spotlight on Lauren Van Clunen, the redshirt senior, reads to kids at local schools, participates in an ALS run, a race for the cure, the hunger task force. She is incredibly active. Here are some shots of her in action, of course, 2019 pre-pandemic that has handcuffed many in terms of actually being out 
in the field, but she is in graduate school, already has her undergraduate degree, has a 3.8 GPA on her way to a Masters, while she's also one of the best players on the two seed in the upcoming Big East tournament. I love how Megan Duffy described her. They call her the grandma because she's just the slow boogie, doesn't move real fast kind of player and laid back off the court. It, it was funny how she described her. But an anchor, an anchor inside. Well, there she is showing range, sticking that shot. And you wonder how Selena Lott might get liberated. She has been silenced by this UConn team. Williams on the drive. Edwards leaves for Beckers. Mule, ball screen Edwards. Williams stepping into it. It's heel. Great box out by Marquette and the board of Aladet. Now that they surveys. And a lot defended here by Beckers. What are they doing to Lott? Well, that time she actually went under the screen, and that's a good shot for Lott. But I, I think for UConn, they're just such a good team-oriented de defense. I mean, they're switching. They know how to cover her. And they make it difficult for the best players to score when they want to. Oh, what a job by Edwards. A navy blue jersey on each shoulder. She rips the ball down off balance and puts it back home. She's just so tough. I, I like her with the combination of Nelson and Udota because they're very different players. You've got the smooth one in the paint, and then you've got the real tough, hard-nosed physical player. Points in the paint, second chance, rebounding, all going away of the Huskies, and Marquette, another three ball, Eliza Carlin, a 40% shoot, shooter, rips it down. If Marquette can get hot from three, that will change the game. Huskies, number one of the country, a third straight week. They're trying to go 18-0 in conference play in their first year back in the Big East. Williams freed up by the screen, bucket. She went through a bit of a shooting funk, but has come back. In her last five games, 45% from outside. And they need her to be great for them to go all the way this year. To me, she's their second scorer. She has to step up. Loose ball, Beckers, one on one. And a travel. Oh, Beckers does not agree. But that was a good hustle. Nice positioning defensively just to get back here. And Kafis makes a nice position. Makes it difficult on Beckers. Actually could have been a charge, and she was kind of lucky she didn't get the call there. Let's see if Marquette can take advantage. 29-point loss to these teams met in Wisconsin the first time around. It was really a month ago. Welcome to March. Lot kicks to the curling king, hang and hit in the lane over top of Beckers, who shows some frustration. Good movement. When Marquette has good movement and they're dribble driving, dribble handing off, they're they're getting good shots. And Gina Oriema urging Yule, go, 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 push it. She goes right down the lane, blocking foul. That's going to be two on Cameron Taylor, their top rebounder. Marquette doing a really nice job here on the weave and. That's the kind of shot you want. Jordan King, who's been really sensational from mid-range this season, their point guard. She knows the offense very well. And there, the second foul on Cameron Taylor. Third leading scorer, their leading rebounder. That's normally what they do great. They're getting killed on the boards tonight. How does that change the game? All oh, subbed in. Point blank put back Aubrey Griffin. Well, the rebounding is something that Marquette relies upon, John, so much for those offensive rebounds. Now you look at it, UConn's got the six offensive rebounds. You've got to find a body. 13 to two in second chance points. Three defenders surround and deny Murata. They have just totally taken away that high one. Beckers hesitated, contested over lot, rim, glass rim, and won by Murata. King's been aggressive at times. Murata trying to shape up and the length of Nelson Adota bothering. Turn it over. So under Duffy, the Golden Eagles have only been outboarded three times in 53 games. They're second best to UConn in rebounds and rebound margin. And three of the top eight rebounders offensively and overall in the Big East play for Megan Duffy. But today, rebounding 17 to 9. 
UConn. Uh, they've dominated the paint all season. In that DePaul win, John, they beat them on the glass 50 to 27. And DePaul, number 24 in the country, that is not an easy thing to do. Nelson Adota trying to show the range. A little flat on the shot. Marquette wins it. Now with a pocket pick by Williams. Down the lane. And that was altered. This Marquette team is, has not really had a, an in-sync series of half-court possessions. What can they execute here? What do you want to see them run? Well, I do want to see Lockett go. I think that's been hard, and that's a nice lob. That's what I want to see, John. <laughs> Beautiful job getting it into Van Cleen. It's all about patience and movement. Also, Nadota giving the long jumper, sticks it. She's got three blocks and she's got eight points with her fourth made field goal. And they're really having a hard time matching up with Nadota. Overplay by Westbrook. Lot with space that ends quickly. The eclipse of Nelson Nadota, who harasses and forces a travel out of Van Clooney. Well, you see Nelson Nadota is doing it on both ends of the floor. She's a defender, a disruptor. She blocks shots. She's got three blocks already on the defensive end. And she's been in double figures in four straight, five of six in the longer stretch, averaging 12 points, shooting over 60% from the field. Williams. Westbrook handed her face from King. Slips by her going left. That shot short. Out of bounds, six to shoot. Coming up, AT&T at the half. Sherry Burris, Monica McNutt will have scores and highlights from all around the country. First half analysis of this one at Hedge Your Way on AT&T at the half. So the top 16 was released by the selection committee yesterday, but uh, per norm, chaos is ensued. Yeah, I mean, actually, after this was released, Kentucky, South Carolina, and Oregon all lost. So you know this thing could shake up a little bit since, but that's kind of the way it is. And, and for this season, John, anything can happen in, in NCAA women's basketball and on the men's side. It has just been insane in terms of that. And UConn cannot get a shot off. Six seconds on the shot clock, and Gino Oriema just put both hands up, pointing to the shot clock, screaming at his young team. Keep in mind, no Paige Becker. She's getting a breather on the bench. They didn't know how much time was And left. when you don't have any fans in here, you can hear everything, and there's no excuse. You can't say I didn't hear it. <laughs> he has talked about Gino Oriema, the load management for Becker, is trying to find a three. There's a, what a rejection by Westbrook. Lot continues to have her shot denied. Arizona, by the way, also fell in a rivalry game yesterday. And Beckers now jogs to the table. Nice look. Nelson Udoda, double figures again. I mean, they could get it to Nelson Udoda every time, and she's going to score the basketball today. She's, she's just in that zone, and nobody can stay with her. Game high, 10 points. Ball lost. Valaday can't track it down. Well, Becker's back in, and the defense can play. And this is where you can things can get out of hand when you're playing UConn. Their defense can lead to offense, and this is just a really nice seal from Nelson Udota. She's commanding the basketball today, and she's just been smooth. And I mean, last year she made such a big sophomore jump, and she's really carried that over into her junior season, John. And UConn leads the Big East, top six in the country, in scoring defense and field goal defense. Beckers, after the breather, finds Nelson Adota. Travel, and Gino Oriema is not happy. Stomping his feet, and then scoffing, flailing the palm as he takes a reluctant seat. Aggressive defense here from UConn. They are pounding the ball handlers. Just like that, 15 on the time. On high three ball, and Van Clunen connects. It's a big shot because the hounding of the ball handlers makes it hard to see over top of the defense, and then they end up nailing the three out of it. 
But that's not really a shot they want. She entered three of ten from three on the year. It is not, and they lucked out. Another offensive board and a frustration foul from Marquette underneath. UConn played defense for almost the entire shot clock, and then they give up a three at the very last second. Certainly not the kind of defense that Coach Ariama likes. He's very unhappy with that. And earlier in the season, he was very annoyed at the defense from his Huskies. And since that Arkansas game, they made a big turn. They made a big turn in that regard. The defense has gotten better and better. But that was not a good possession. Last foul to Murata, her second, and UConn another offensive board. And they have overwhelmed Marquette on the glass yet again. Edwards given space, looks for help, the curling Beckers. Williams right down the lane, blows by, shot off Edwards, put back, disrupted, Marquette ball. And Murata plays with a couple of fouls. Cameron Taylor, their top rebounder, tethered to the bench with two fouls since the 7.34 mark of the quarter. Oh, nice look on the cut to Lott. And that's just a hard cut. Beautiful, beautiful cut by Lott. They need her to get involved. That's her first bucket, Julianne. She had no points and was 0 for 5 before that score. She is their leading scorer, leads them in most offensive categories. Two minutes. Aubrey Griffin's getting some extra time. Oh, nice look by Lott, hedged a little bit, forces the turnover. See, John, suddenly you see about three or four stops from Marquette, and suddenly they're into this game. They're not far behind. Great job here on the screen, and then just a hard cut off the screen. Yeah, UConn has missed on its last four from the floor, hasn't scored in two and a half minutes. Here's the window for Marquette. Let's see if Lott springs to life. Ball screen. They go under. Lott feeds corner. King up top, off the hesitation. Murata loses handle, Edwards has it. Shovels to Beckers. Head fake three, cuts closer up the grain of the lane, the loss. And Marquette's got it. Van Clune in the one hand a lot. Touch to Murata, stolen by Beckers. See, in that situation, I think Beckers should have taken that three rather than trying to force speed in the middle. Animated coaching for Megan Duffy as Nelson Adota gets back into the table by Gina Oriema. Edwards, the long jumper is good. Yeah, Edwards. She had about 10 feet to shoot that. They are letting her take that shot. Double figures and four of six for Edwards, shooting 75% from the field in that time. And now she jumps the pass and gets the steal. Aliyah Edwards, bad pass at the grain of the lane, deflected. UConn maintains about a 14 second differential shot to game clock here. Westbrook looks to Gino Oriema. He gives a flat, bent palm and says, run it. Edwards trying to carve out space. Beckers has it knocked free. Beckers stepping into it. Short, tipped, put back, basket, Aubrey Griffin. And that's what Aubrey Griffin does. That's what she's in the game to do, the garbage points. And now the long look nearly to midcourt. Foul by Williams, the physicality for UConn, unrelenting. The rebounding battle goes to UConn right now. That is what is killing Marquette, something that doesn't typically kill them. Like we've talked about, 11 to just four rebounds. And UConn's got 15 points off those second chances. That's a lot of points in the first half. A lot of subs late, and might we get a timeout here? Or was the sub not allowed? Beckers has gone to bench. Nelson Adota goes bench. Mule is back after a long spell on the bench. Yeah. I think there's some confusion about the last sub. Now, word to Gina Oriem. I think they're going to make Nelson Adota go back in, that she wasn't cleared to leave the floor. That's it. Yeah, Maybe there was Griffin. no check in, probably. Well, Paige Beckers goes back onto the floor, too. Seven seconds. King. Van Clunen to beat the buzzer. Banker off. Well, UConn mostly dominates the first half. They lead by 12 at the break. Bruising physicality. Gina Oriema, some teaching moments with Paige Beckers and company as the one seed looks good. 
It's the March to March, presented by Principal Financial Group. You're watching March to March, presented by Principal Financial Group. 37-25, UConn, the 11-time national champs, and a title taken by our own Carlo Generini, welcoming in son Luca, mom Lisa, and baby are doing well. That is the title of the most adorable baby of 2021. Congratulations and to big sister Ava as well. John Sadak, along with the expecting Julianne Viani, congratulations Thank to you, you and your husband as well. I hope my kid's that cute. It is a boy <laughs> <laughs> coming. I do know that much. <laughs> well, what were your takeaways from the first half of this game? Well, I think the first half of the game got a little sloppy at times, but UConn was able to really outdo themselves in every single category, John. I mean, the rebounding battle, they were able to force turnovers and get what they really wanted. But I expect to see them even more smooth in the second half. Well, let's take a look and break down some of that action as it's time for Worth the Watch, brought to you by Principal Financial Group. I mean, it really was all about the second chance opportunities. The rebounding battle, they had 15 points off of those second chance opportunities. 23 rebounds to just 13 of Marquette's rebounds. I mean, this is the story of the game, folks, and, and you've got to love the battling in there. And this is against a team that typically rebounds the basketball very well, but when you face a Huskies team, the score changes in every single way. Megan Duffy is coaching her 54th game with Marquette. Her Golden Eagles had only been out-rebounded three times in their first 53 games under her stewardship. Outdone by 10 tonight in there. Look at Selena Locke. In the 17 wins, almost 17 points per. In the four losses, only 8.5 points per. Only two points. One made field goal in the first half, Julian. Yeah, they rely heavily on her, and UConn has made it very hard for her to get her looks and get her points, and that's kind of what they do. They're a little longer, a little faster, a little stronger. Mid lane, Beckers in and out. Rebound to King. Here comes Marquette. Marquette team 11 and 1 on the road. The 11 road wins a program record. Winners of five straight, 11 of 13. Fresh off their first win against a ranked opponent this year when they took down DePaul in a rematch. Force pass somehow finds Murata. Eight to shoot. Taylor sticks it. And remember, the Cameron Taylor spent the last seven and a half minutes of the first half on the bench. He fouled for And that's a really good point. And she averages 11 points a game and almost seven boards a game, John. So having her back in should be a changing of the tide for them. And there, Avino Westbrook lights it up. 33% on the year, but entered tonight, Julianne, in a four for 31 slide from outside. See how Marquette can respond. And turnover, Westbrook, the head man, Mule. Transition win. And that was a problem in the first half was the turnovers. A lot of turnovers that led to points. Gino Oriema with both hands up, arms extended, telling his defense to mimic him. Their length has been disruptive. Taylor calling for the ball, but the clap sticks the jumper. Back to back buckets for Cameron Taylor. And sometimes when a player's out with foul trouble, they come back in the second half flat. Well, she's doing the opposite. She was well rested, and now she feels that energy. Well, Westbrook feeling it too. Hits heel. And the board to Taylor. Beckers, by the way, hasn't scored since the last minute of the first quarter. Didn't get a look there. Taylor again. Free throw line Jay on the way off, but she boxes and boards. Marquette maintains. King below two is two. A really nice start here for Marquette. They've got the energy. Williams, hard ball screen Westbrook. Williams, that lefty J hits heel. Not a lot of offense run there by UConn. Yeah, they, they stood still a lot. We saw some stagnation in the first half from UConn at times, John. You see Lott, he did have seven dimes in the first, but called upon to score so much, we get the whistle off ball. A really nice momentum to start the ball game here in the second half. and. Of course, good reversal to Jordan King, and she finishes the jumper. Now, UConn's been kind of giving that up. That, that's something that we both noticed throughout this game is they shoot the perimeter shots. We don't care, especially the threes. We'll give that up. Just don't come inside. 
Second foul to Mule, and Gino Oriema goes big, putting Aliyah Edwards back in. This is what he told us he expected to do more all game. He's going with the extra big. Does that make an impact here? King wide open on the screen, gets it. What a pick by Van Cloonan. Van Cloonan King, she stops on a dime off the ball, off the dribble. She's got a really great pull-up. UConn has led this game by as much as 15, but knocked back down to single digits. Much better movement off ball by the Huskies. Beckers gets fed on the curl. And the foul. Blocked her first. The Marquette here doing the old fashioned pick and roll game, and Jordan King nails it. Sharp off of the screen, and, and it's so important to go shoulder to shoulder because you're going to get a shot off. Beckers right back to the inbounder, Westbrook Nelson Adoda. She's been living in that spot. Shot off. Loose ball, Marquette. Head man lock. One on one with Beckers. Bucket. And that might have been the easiest bucket Lock has seen all night. That is eight unanswered by Marquette in less than two minutes to draw within seven. UConn's go to player, Paige Beckers, gets a touch. Has he scored since the late stage of the opening quarter? Ball screen, over top, lock. Second screen. Williams holding that pivot with the dribble in the heavy traffic. Nelson Adota, the long jam! That's a tough shot, Julie. It is, and a, and a much needed one. And Nelson Adota has been that person here for UConn the whole night. Give her the ball. She's feeling it. And there's a matchup problem. Oh, nice cut by a lot. Taylor feeds her. Amber Taylor has sprung Marquette back to life to ignite the second. Having her out in the first half is proving to be a big deal. She's battling with Edwards down low. So Nelson Adota, another long jumper. Is that a good shot? Edwards the board, foul on the floor. We're going to give Taylor her third. Marquette here doing a great job. Just nice patience and third Selena Lock getting Taylor. herself open off of that back screen. Backdoor cut. Beckers. Touch off. Edwards cleans it up. That's sub for Gino Oriema paying immediate dividends. Marquette's got a touch deeper. Taylor Valaday showed some physicality. Hard possession of the basketball. Firm dribble. She gets fed in the belly. Snaps it off. Lot. A little flat and short. Edwards has it. Westbrook. Beckers. Oh, nice look to Edwards on the cut. How does she see a pass like that? Just terrific patience. And she's got an instinct for the game. And you notice Paige Becker, as I said it earlier, she doesn't force things. She lets the game come to her. She's very unselfish. Her teammates know it. They love to play with her. An internal clock, that slow heartbeat. A lot off the up fake. Just barely holding the pivot. Murata. Dribble if she wants. Van Clunen wants it. Help comes from Becker's on the double. Nice look back. Baseline, five to shoot. Now today, Taylor tough effort. Westbrook altered it. UConn's got some steam. Westbrook giving a wide open jumper. Reluctant miss, tracked down by Williams. Nelson Dodona slipping closer, attacking Taylor. She had to play soft there with three fouls, Julian. Yeah, and she knew it. And Nelson Dodona knew it, took it at her. Timeout, Marquette. Well, Marquette gets it across, calls timeout. And UConn starting to extend this lead a little bit. A nice little pass into Nelson Adota, the forward with the drive and the finish. And now you welcome back UConn into the Big East. And you know what Megan Duffy said? She likes it. She likes that there is a team that can really notch everybody else up. They want to get to their level. Mule could have finished there after the turnover, smothering D by Edwards. No Cameron Taylor on the floor with three fouls. She sloughed off and allowed a bucket to Olivia Nelson Adota. Now sits on the bench out of the cold timeout. Dead ball means immediate. Lot 
inline drive sealed off. Reverse the basketball. Now today, zigzag, kick to lot, rhythm three. Hits heel with one of a timer tap to control by the Huskies. The length of Nelson Nagoda has been a massive difference maker. She's been all over the floor. I mean, she is the matchup problem for Marquette on both ends of the floor. Westbrook running the show now leaves for Beckers. At 14 assists, the all-time UConn record last time out. Edwards in and out. Mule deflects out of bounds and will step aside. The UConn ball 20 to shoot. An animated Gino Orieva, his Huskies up 13. Tonight, midnight Eastern, join the inside college basketball crew. They talk all things oops and the road to the Final Four right here on CBS Sports Network. Olivia Nelson Adona getting things done. Boy, she is. I mean, she is all over the floor here tonight, and it has just been her length on, in all areas, whether she's got her back to the basket and somebody's full behind her, she's blocking shots with that length. She's able to take it off the bounce like a guard. She's just really killing Marquette in every category. And we've been talking about this. Coach Ariama has gone big, and that has really helped having a Dota in the game with Edwards. And there's Olivia Nelson Adota. Rebound, put back, draws the foul. She leads the game with 14 points. She'll try to add to a 6 0 run. Marquette hasn't scored for Megan Duffy in almost three minutes. And that's since the substitutions. I, I think that's a big reason why Marquette has not scored because they're not able to see past the line. Foul to Lauren Van Kloon in her first. And Nelson Adoto, 61% free throw shooter. And there you see Cameron Taylor. Spent the last seven and a half minutes of the first half on the bench. She was the spark plug that drew Marquette within seven to begin the second. Picked up that third foul and didn't defend as well. That, that's the problem. And with her on the bench, she's just no help. They need her in the game. Murata ready to sub in for Marquette. Kristen Williams the same for UConn. They are hounding Van Clunen down low. Nelson Nagoda creating space underneath. Lock. Allowed a little ground, bad pass, nearly picked by Beckers, loose, no possession exchange, by the ticks, wide open, King, buddy. You gamble and you pay, that possession, Marquette gets the advantage. And that snaps the 7-0 surge by UConn, which is led by as many as 15. There's a 42-27 margin in the early stage of the third quarter. Mule. The lead for Beckers, hounded by Lott, ball screen, go over top. Mule looking at Nelson Adota. Trying to muscle in, muscle in, no help comes, her shot short. Big D there by Van Clunen. Van Clunen screen, King hesitating, crossover. Foul to Van. Gets past Mule, help from Nelson Adota, got her in the air and a foul. All you need is a Dota to step up and spook you. You don't even need to go up for the shot. She will just spook you, especially if you're a small guard going into the land of the trees. That's turnovers now piling up. They call that a travel. That's 14 turnovers on the Marquette. They have nearly as many turnovers as they do made baskets, Julian, and 17. That's what happens when you play the Huskies, and, and that's how they beat teams. Valade with five turnovers, no points, 0 for 1 from the field. Mule tried to force the wraparound look. Valade trucks it away. Given the J, she'll take and miss. Rebound Williams, fresh in off the bench. And those are chippies you need. You really do. You don't get a lot of those opportunities against Connecticut. Beckers has been quiet for a long stretch. But at any moment, she can knock down five threes. And so the key is staying on assignment. Throw it off, offensive foul. Lot came up, bringing her fingers to her nose. I think she's checking for blood right now, Bento. Paige Becker's here coming around the corner, and it was not on her, it was on a Dota on the screen. And I think they're looking at that shoulder. That shoulder certainly went right into her. That'll be Olivia Nelson Adota's second foul. 40 seconds. Taylor's back in. Now Taylor trying to carve out space. 
Three ball. Well, I think that counts. This is a horse. Oh, Van Clunen. He'll take it. He'll take it. <laughs> oh, the big move by Locke to pluck it away. 18 seconds. Valade hanging, missing. Rebound to Marquette. Passing out of the double to King. They can hold for a shot. Five seconds. Taylor to beat the buzzer. Swatted away. Another block by Olivia Nelson Adota. And through three, it's back to single digits. Oh, what a beautiful block that was. And they just don't foul. You're watching March to March, presented by Principal Financial Group. And we have a single digit game into the fourth. Welcome on back, 51-42 into the fourth, UConn on top. Coming up next, College Hoops triple header conclusion, a Mountain West matchup, Air Force and Colorado State. Catch it all right here on CBS Sports Network. 15-4 are the Rams, a dozen wins in the Mountain West, including wins at San Diego State, at Utah State versus Boise State. They factor right now as a 10 seed, according to our own Jerry Palm. Well, UConn on the year, Julianne, has won its league games by an average of over 35 points per. Here's a single-digit game in the fourth in the regular season finale. A turnover, Marquette. But UConn hasn't hit a field goal since the 4:02 mark in the third quarter. What have you seen? I credit that to the toughness of Marquette. Marquette's defense has really picked up. They've played phenomenally well in the second half since the start and Cameron Taylor was a big factor to start this half she's back in the game here and there is lock pick in the pocket of Paige Beckers they've missed a few of those layups today Beckers wins it and those are ones you just can't get back because they are just the easy ones the UConn doesn't give up often Beckers Jumper, her first point since the last minute of the opening quarter, and that's who you were calling upon while we were at break. Yeah, I said Beckers needs to step up. She needs to be aggressive, and at any moment she can be. It's almost as though she lays back until she's needed, and then boom, she puts the jets on. But they need her to look for her shot, be assertive, because she can really pop one in at any moment she wants to. Beautiful job off that screen. She's now the third Husky in double figures. Big swat by Westbrook. Marquette still has the ball. Third quarter went to Marquette, Jewel, 17-14. The last time UConn was outscored in any quarter, February the 10th against Seton Hall, the team that perhaps uh, could be an at-large entry from the Big East. Gina Oriema yeah. believes uh, they should get consideration. Yeah, Tony Bazell has done a great job with that team this year. They are tough, and they really played Connecticut tough as well. Here's another shot that's altered by Olivia Nelson Adota. She's having herself her best game of the season in terms of blocks. Her career high is seven. Only several away from matching that. Yeah, she's ninth in the record books. <laughs> she's pretty good. Five today. And there's another bucket for the Huskies. But if you want to beat UConn, Megan Duffy repeated that mantra multiple times in our chat. Got to score, got to score, got to score. King looks to lot, extra pass down to them, a fake and line. Oh, nice job by Edwards to cut her off. Nine to shoot, ball reversal. King creating, stepping back over Williams. In and out. And Nelson Adota, another rebound. She's been sensational. And the rebounding enables UConn to run. Westbrook on nice wraparound look to Edwards. Kick back to Westbrook. And Beckers was the UConn freshman record entered with 130 assists. So the single game record regardless of class last time out. Long two on high. Off target, back tap doesn't work for Nelson Adota. Taylor has it, but is slow up the floor. Now day bumped by Beckers. That'll be a foul. You can foul number five, Paige Beckers. Her first. So Beckers has her first. First team foul in the corner. Nice push up the floor here from Lott, and Beckers in the wrong place at the wrong time there. Aubrey Griffin is back. Mule subs in. Beckers a breather. And the same for Edwards. 
And Becker's dropped 30 on Marquette when these teams met in early February. That was part of a stretch of three straight 30-point performances, the first to do so in the history of UConn basketball. That's crazy. And when you think about the names that have come out of this program, that is crazy. We're going to get a call timeout from Marquette. 55-42, Gina Oriema's crew in the regular season finale, up 13. One seed UConn, two seed Marquette, 55-42, your score. Here are tonight's PNC Bank difference makers, Lauren Van Cloonen getting it done for the Golden Eagles. She has been their difference maker, and this is their glue, their player they look to on any given night, and she's been phenomenal. And then Olivia Nelson, Dota, has done it for Connecticut. She's been a matchup nightmare. She's 7 of 16 from the floor, and, boy, UConn has dominated the paint, and, and so much of this is because of Adota and her ability to just get the ball, the ball in the paint and make moves. And, of course, Edwards has been really physical and doing a great job underneath and whether it's penetrating whether it's getting into the teeth of the defense this is a team that has really done it i mean they've got 32 points in the paint john doubling them up 32 to 16. biggie's tournament comes your way this coming weekend also in the nutmeg state of connecticut UConn has cemented the one seed, Marquette the two, so this is a possible title game preview. It's been far closer today than it was in the first matchup, and that shot off for King, weak side for the Westbrook. Are you seeing enough today to believe that Marquette can get even closer in a possible tournament title game rematch? I think it can give them confidence going in. If they keep this game close, of course, if they beat UConn, that's even better confidence-wise, but... Yes, it can. It can absolutely help you. You're playing your best going into the tournament. Wilson and Dota salts her gaudy numbers. 17 points. A lot of jumpers, too, both mid-range and longer days. She makes it look so easy. I mean, she's just very smooth. Wide open, Taylor. Oh, they fell asleep on that block, and Taylor chips it home. Yeah, that's a really nice job. Good pass. That's the first points, though, for Marquette this quarter. It was 6 love UConn at the start. Griffin. The mule shaping up. Tries to cut off ball. Williams gets fed in the mule screen. Another screen lot over top. Seven to shoot. Mule snaps it, no look. Griffin out of the corner. Nelson a jump up right on the spot. Weak side put back. What a pass. I mean, it has been just multiple times. She just has such a nose for the basketball, for the rim. And we get a foul here on Mule. It'll be her third. It has been the Nelson to Dota show. Phenomenal pass, post-entry pass, perfect. Back to her basket, doesn't matter where she is on the floor. How about a rebound, a put back? No problem with the finish. A lot of second chance opportunities, and she has dominated. Paige Becker's return, she defends against Valaday. Olivia Nelson Adota now with 19 and seven, also has five blocks. Murata ready to sub in for Marquette. King off the bounce, Taylor. Three to shoot, Taylor draws the foul as the timer was set to expire. Taylor came out this half on fire, had to sit out a little bit with her third back in the game, and I do like her physical presence. She's had some really nice games this season. 27 points against Villanova. She's really proven that she has that physical, composed nature. And Megan Duffy told us that she is just scratching the surface, learning how to stay in the game and stay out of foul trouble. That has been a key for her. Converts on the first, so some notable subs is Megan Duffy elected to sub Murata back in, Valaday out, so she goes bigger. And Gina Oriema does the same. Edwards is back in. He is loved. He told us yesterday, I like my big lineup against their big lineup, and I think he's been proven right. Yeah, he has, because their bigs are pretty versatile, and they can really make things difficult for the true posts that Marquette has. A lot comes up grimacing. Did she hiccup that left foot ankle area there for that foul? It looks like she is grimacing, and look here, she's trying to squeeze through. I think it's Charlie Horse. That's something that's 
happened to me frequently when I was a player trying to slide above the screen because you don't want that person to get the shot off. Rather than going under it, you end up getting so many Charlie Wilson. She is a tough player who has been clearly number one on the scouting report today. That time, Edwards coughs it up. Murata surveying. King has handled a lot in favor of Lott. And Lott defended by Beckers. Marquette's losses, Lott's production gets cut about in half. Contact no calls. Edwards fell down from Taylor. And Taylor now has a dozen. Marquette hanging in here. 13-point difference. And remember, it was nearly 30 when these teams met less than a month ago in UConn's favor. Megan Duffy did not think they were 30 points worse than UConn. She did not like the outcome of that game. They had a bunch of games in a bunch in, in a short period of time. Becker, rainbow miss, and a shot clock violation before it could be caught. So here's Megan Duffy's team down 11, 4.08 to go in the quarter. And, and she was by no means conceding the game, but she underscored to us the biggest thing she wanted to see different from her team today was toughness. Yeah, physicality and toughness. It, it all goes hand in hand, and we've seen that. She's an intensely competitive coach, mirrors the way she was as a player, something Gino Oriema talked about. Taylor fed pretty bounce pass, but in and out. That's happened to Marquette a few times here on these road rings. UConn gets it across. They're going to call timeout. Timeout. 11-point difference and a possible title game preview in the Big East. Welcome on back. These are the top five in the Big East in terms of net rankings. Three-factor as tournament teams with those seeds as of now. Seton Hall and Villanova out, according to most projections. What do you think? Julia? I think they're both in. I think they are both very good teams, and they could get in and even should get in. I mean, Coach Ariama even said that. You Listen, think all five? Well, it, I think at least four of them should get in. Seton Hall is on the bubble, and... I think Villanova is too, but I think they're both excellent teams. And listen, the only way you can be sure is by winning the tournament. So they're going to have a competitive tournament coming up. Well, Gino Oriema believes there should be consideration to talking about four. And I think Megan Duffy underscored the same. Megan Duffy perhaps was even more definitive about her field of seed. She thinks that both Marquette and DePaul are more deserving of avoiding that 8-9. So you don't have to play the one. Yeah, it is the worst seed to get. It, it is. A lot that shot contested. Now tries to defend against Westbrook. Beats her down the floor. Edwards helps carve out some space, but a miss. And Westbrook slow to get up. And she is writhing on the floor. Hey, that looked like a missed foul there. I mean, she might have gotten bumped. King shot off the iron. Thankfully, Westbrook was up to her feet. Had just jogged back to midcourt. But she is still not moving normally. Lurking in that right corner. You see her doubled over. Just stabbed her hand to her mouth. Now her arm crossing against her chest. And she asked for the ball. And Gino Oriana says, I, I need a timeout. And you wonder if he's going to sub her out. Staggered strides as she makes her way toward the bench. Hope she's okay. Avina Westbrook being looked at by athletic trainer Janelle Francisco. Here's what happened. It looked like it could have just been an ankle. I don't think she gets touched here. Actually, she doesn't. She probably turns her ankle funny or lands in an awkward way. Now Westbrook, of course, coming off left knee surgery. Hadn't played in a while before this year, the Tennessee transfer. Yeah, that was definitely not a foul. Becker's deep three. Edwards, the board, put back, and that's been the game, Julia. She is so tough. I've definitely seen a lot out of her. I think that she's got such an upside, plays with that finishing ability and the, and the strong contact. Second chance points are 24 to four in favor of UConn. They have cleaned up their misses, and it's been a lot more one and dones for Marquette. Their foul, oh no, timeout. Marquette. Marquette calls timeout with 11 to shoot. 
Aaliyah Edwards fighting through. Putting home the miss, cleaning it up for a 61-48 margin. Selena Lott, 3 of 12 from the field, 6 points. Marquette ball, 11 to shoot. Out of the Golden Eagles, called timeout. Entry out of bounds, 9 to shoot. UConn just got a bucket other end to snap a 3-and-a-half-minute scoreless stretch. Now look at Megan Duffy design. Her team hasn't scored in almost three minutes. Yeah, they need a bucket bad here. Five to shoot. A lot too long. Out of bounds. Deflected. It's Marquette ball. Four to shoot. What's possible? Connecticut gets a piece of everything, John. It's unbelievable. But, I mean, anything here, I mean, I would, I would think something inside would be ideal. Ball away. Rejected. Another block by Olivia Nelson Adota. Challenging her career high. Six shot swats tonight. And is UConn taking game. the air out of the ball here? Do you consider fouling? Yeah, I mean, they're going to take their time, and I would consider it. Although putting them at the line is never helpful. They make their foul shots. Yule. Olivia Nelson Adota is only a 61% free throw shooter. Yule stepping back. Got it off, but didn't hit iron. Shot clock violation. Uh, they were able to drain 30 seconds off the clock there. Olivia Nelson Adota, six double doubles this year for Gino Oriyama. She's got 19, 10, and 7. Oh my goodness. A monster performance from her. And you said it earlier, she's had some inconsistency this season, but when they need her, she steps up. Taylor's screen doesn't get seen out of the corner. Claire Kafis off. Taylor trying to put it back. And one. Cameron Taylor. Oh, that is a tough, tough, hard nose player right there. She has such a nose for the ball. Good timing. She stays with it. Great job. And to shoot this over the best shot blocker in the nation in Adota, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's four fouls on Olivia Nelson Adota. So add one free throw here for Taylor. She converts. If Taylor could have stayed in the game a little longer today, this could be a different story. And Mule. She's five for five at the line. She hasn't missed, but hasn't had many attempts. Nelson Adota is a great player to try to foul. Mule. A lot of time ticking here. High low to Edwards. Edwards. Oh, just too easy. Only got 30 seconds. Back to a dozen. Shot rattles on down for Taylor. And Marquette with only one foul. I just, I think that's a lot of time that was wasted, but they woulda, shoulda, coulda foul. Yeah, they, they, they got let no it go. Yeah. But what it is that does make it so hard is the fact that Connecticut is a 90 something percent free throw shooting team. But what a battle here. Now the final seconds fade, so the rematch a lot closer than the first time around. Could there be a third meeting? These will be the one and two seeds in the Big East tournament. And UConn polishes off a perfect return to the Big East Conference, going 18-0 and in regular season Big East play. And they're, they're not exactly celebrating right now either. <laughs> that was a close game. I think a little too close for their liking. Uh, the Huskies now stand at 21-1. and Marquette sees its five-game